Now, this, this topic of interviews is one that I could go on forever about, but there, that's really not going to be very helpful for you guys. So I want to touch on the key points, the things that you really need to know of going into the process to be able to know what to expect and how to plan and prepare for it. So the first thing that I want to tell you about the interview process is the whole scheduling and trying to plan it. I don't care what your plans are or what you think your plans are heading into the interview process. It is not going to work out how you think. Um, the way that the, the the way that it works is essentially programs can use one of three things. They can either email you and ask you to respond with a date of your choosing, which they usually provide you with a few options, and then you respond with like your first, second, and third choice. And most times you get your first choice, but that's not always true. The other way is that ERAS actually has a scheduler in it, which works amazingly, but I guess it costs the programs more money, so a lot of them don't use it. And the third way is, is that they use their own separate like third-party interview schedulers, which you know can be kind of quirky, uh, but for the most part they work okay. The issue is not using the scheduling system, it's that they don't give you an infinite number of dates to pick from, and so there's a lot of overlap and you end up having to pick and choose between certain programs. The other thing is trying to plan to cut down on cost. Cost is like one of the biggest limiting factors to the whole interview season. And if you think that it's gonna be beneficial for you to do an interview out in California in the beginning of October and then come back in November and then come back in December, you're gonna spend a ton of money. So if you can, it's best if you can try to cluster book your interviews. Like for example, I went to Minnesota, then down to uh, Case Western in Cleveland, and then shot over to New York to come back down to North Carolina. So it kind of was like one path. It's not convenient by any means, but it was the best that I could do given that situation. And at least having Minnesota and Case Western close by kind of saved me on some flight costs. The next thing is, is like, when do you have to be there? Well, if your interview is on the 14th, you really should be there on on the 13th. Number one, because you don't want to be trying to travel and get there too late. Um, and number two, most interviews actually have a dinner the night before. And the dinner is usually at a really good restaurant, so you want to go for the food because it's free food and we're med students. But it's also a great chance to sit down and talk to the residents and really get them in a more kind of social candid environment get them talking about their experience with the residency, the things they like, the things they don't. So it's finally here interview day and you are heading in and I'm sure that your nerves are probably jumpy, you're trying to figure out like, uh, you know, what am I? But um, really the interview days have gone really smoothly and um, they do a really good job. They've done this multiple times before and they're really trying to give you and put you at a very comfortable uh, feeling. I mean, you're, you're choosing this program and you want to feel like you want to go there. So they try to do their best to make you feel at home. Um, as far as the questions go, you know, I don't know if this is just PM&R, but from what I've heard from my classmates, um, there hasn't been too many times during an interview where they've really gotten quote unquote pimped or been asked like difficult medical questions. And I'll say this, if you go to a program and they're asking you questions that are very intrusive and kind of putting you on the spot, I don't know, that would kind of give me the wrong impression uh, of, of a program. And I don't know if I'd be very comfortable with ranking them knowing that I'm going to go there and I'm going to train and they're going to be putting me on the spot all the time and I have to feel like, you know, I'm getting ambushed. Um, so overall, you know, the interviews have been very cordial, uh, very social, more conversational than anything else. And I think that's the way that it should be. So by far, I mean, I can't give you a ton of advice on questions because they've all been different. But I will tell you this, that the one question you are going to be asked is, do you have any questions for me? They want to know that you're read up on the program. They want to know that you've looked into something, some aspect of the program, and that you have questions prepared for them. And not just like generic, vague like questions. They want to know that you thought about specific things that make their program stand out. So when people say to kind of prepare for the interview or research for the interview, this is what they're talking about. Spend a little time on their website, find out a question that you can ask, and when you're in with that program director, then you can shine.
And then the last thing, um, after you leave the interview, communications with the programs is kind of a matter of taste, I guess. Uh, lots of people say that you should definitely reach out with an email. Some people have like these rigid rules about like within 48 hours you should be reaching out. And I don't know if any of that is necessarily true, but I do think that a follow-up email is nice and professional. No matter what you're doing, whatever job you're interviewing for, you should always email somebody and just say, hey, thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. Um, and I think that that's, you know, consistent across the board with whatever profession you're in. As far as like writing handwritten thank yous, I don't really know if that matters too much. Most of the program directors have said, we're putting in the rank list, so sending us letters is not really going to do much, but if you wanna do that and it makes you feel better and it makes you feel like you went the extra mile, if you wanna be more comfortable, by all means, I'm not gonna tell you not to do it. Um, but the one thing that I uh, will you know, kind of harp on and I think is important is what's called a second look. And some programs will bring it up and some programs won't, but if you really, really love a program and you want to you know, get an extra chance to talk to the residents or see them in action, ask about a second look. So that's all a second look is, is you go back, you spend some time with the residents, you shadow them, and you get to experience what an actual day is like in the residency. I think it's really valuable for two reasons. Number one, anyone can look good on an interview day. They can put their best foot forward, they can kind of keep you away from residents that may not like the program that much, or they can kind of shy you away from things that you know, they really don't want to highlight and really just focus on their strengths. When you're there for a whole day, you really get to see the program in its entirety, and I think that's important for you when you're making the decision. Remember, you're the one that's choosing them just as much as they're, they're choosing you. And it's important for you to see everything, see how all the, the cogs kind of turn and, and how where there's like little sticky things uh, and, and maybe some kind of areas in the program where you may not have saw that on an interview day. So I think that second looks are really important for that. And number two, it gives you a chance to get yourself in front of the program director again. They see your face. They remember you from the interview day. Uh, the interview process is long and grueling for both us and for the program directors and for the, everybody in the program. And so you want to try to be memorable in a good way. And I think coming back for a second look does that. You're not gonna be able to do it for every program that you interview at, but your top programs going back for second looks I think goes a long way to both give you the confidence to put that program at your number one spot and two, to remind them why they should put you at their number one or two spot. So in summary guys, uh, preparing for your interviews, plan for your travel as best as you can. Uh, it's gonna be difficult but do whatever you can do. Make sure that before you go in for your interview, you spend a little bit of time familiarizing yourself with the program, looking at their at their website so that when they ask you that question, which they inevitably will, of do you have any questions for me, you're prepared with a really good quality question. And then the last thing, when everything is all said and done, a nice follow-up professional email is something that I think goes a long way. Uh, it doesn't have to be handwritten. Really, when you decide to send it, I don't think is as important as, as just sending it. Um, and then the second thing is, is that if you're really interested in a program, check out a second look or ask them about a second look. And if they can accommodate you, it might just be you know something to kind of uh, boost you up a little bit and give you a better chance of getting that residency that you really want. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you need or you have any questions, please post them down in the comments below. I will be more than happy to answer them. But this really is not by you know any means all inclusive. This, this We could talk about this topic for days. It's really just to kind of give you some overall points of reference and some helpful tips that I think will help you through the interview season. So take care guys. Good luck through your interviews and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon in the next vlog. Bye now.